the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks every time we have the opportunity to to, uh, glorify you and to come together in worship as a holy community. Lord, in this time, I ask that either because of me or in spite of me, that you bring a message to your people this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So over the past several weeks during Advent, we have taken a closer look at some very powerful hymns that share the story and faith of Christmas through the witness of their composers. The first week, we heard, O come, O come, Emmanuel. The second week, angels from the realms of glory. The third week, do you hear what I hear? On the fourth Sunday, we had a beautiful cantata, which was titled, Once Upon a Night. And on Christmas Eve, we took a look at Silent Night and got to hear more of that story. Today, on our Sunday following Christmas, we will take a look at the story behind the spiritual hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain. In, searching, in researching this hymn, I discovered a story that reminds me of why I became a lover of history and eventually a history major in college. History is about preserving knowledge of the past for the benefit of the present and the future. It represents the testimony and story of all who have come before us. When those stories are lost, they become lost forever. And the voices of those people, places, and events become silenced. In some cases, the stories are documented and preserved in writing. Much of our history, however, has been passed down orally from generation to generation. Scholars believe that many of the early books of the Old Testament were passed down orally before eventually being documented. This is a wonderful but fragile way of passing down the stories from the past. When I was in college, one of my professors shared a story of this, of why it's so important to try and preserve history, especially from the oral tradition. And it it was a class that I was taking on the Civil War, and he talked about a historian back during the 1930s that was trying to document many of the stories that were passed down from the Civil War. One thing in particular was something known as the rebel yell, which was a tremendous cry that would be uh, lifted up before a battle from Confederate troops. And many people had written about it, but no one could really put into words what it sounded like. So he went about going through the, <coughs> going through the country trying to find the surviving uh, Civil War soldiers that may remember this and be able to recreate it. And he found a gentleman that had been a Confederate soldier um, and could recreate the rebel yell. And he went out to interview him, talked to him, actually heard this, and when he pulled his recording device out, he discovered that there was nowhere to plug it in. So he went back to town and tried to find some sort of hookup that he could use to have electricity to be able to use the recording device. And the next day, he went back out uh, to the soldier's home to meet with him to record it and the old soldier had passed away over the course of the night. So he was never able to find it or document it or recreate it, so it was sort of lost uh, for history. So the professor uses this as a story to remember to try and record and preserve these things of history so that we have those. In the case of our hymn for today, we have the family of John Wesley Work, to thank for finding, preserving, and sharing the words and music of an unknown slave who shared his Christmas witness through Go Tell It on the Mountain. John Wesley Work was one of the few college-educated black men in the South just after the Civil War. He directed a choir in Nashville, Tennessee that contained members of the Jubilee Singers from Fisk University. In addition to his love for music, Work was also a scholar and a lover of history. He began the work of attempting to preserve the spiritual songs of slaves sung in the fields, chain gangs, and small black churches of the South. Since most slaves were not educated at that time, these songs were not written down and could only be found passed down in the oral tradition. 
Work went about finding the songs, documenting them, and through the help of his choir and the Jubilee singers, shared them with the world. These songs became so popular that the Jubilee singers were invited to sing for Queen Victoria in England and for President Arthur in Washington, D.C., sharing the spiritual songs of slaves. Work's passion and love was passed down to his two sons, John Jr. and Frederick. It was his sons that discovered the spiritual Go Tell It on the Mountain. They reworked it a bit to be sung by a choir, and through the help of the Jubilee singers, now conducted by John Jr.'s wife, they shared it with the world. It became widely popular. It was one of the few Christmas spirituals ever discovered. It also was different from many other spirituals, as it did not focus on earthly pain and joy only found in heaven. It focused on the experience of the shepherds encountering the holy host of angels proclaiming the Messiah's birth. The angels appeared to lowly shepherds and proclaimed the birth of Christ in a lowly manger. It was a song of hope proclaiming that the glory of God is for all, especially the lowly. The present form of this hymn that we sing today we owe to John Works III, the grandson of John Wesley Work. During the Depression era, John Work III set about traveling the country, interviewing former slaves and documenting as many Negro spirituals as he could. He was bent on continuing the work of his family to preserve the testimonies and stories of the black slaves for future generations to know and appreciate. It was John III that added some verses to go tell it on the mountain, which it is believed he discovered through the process of interviews. It was published in its current form in 1940 and has been sung by church choirs, church congregations, and many famous music musicians ever since. I believe that his hymn is so loved, not just for its upbeat tune, but also its message. We encounter the story in which God brings us all salvation through the birth of a little child. We discover that it is a story worth sharing and proclaiming, not just from the mountaintops, but over the hills and everywhere. Just as Simeon and Anna saw something tremendous in this child being brought to the temple to be blessed and knowing that God had brought the Messiah before the people, it was something to be proclaimed. It was something to be shouted from the mountaintops. Throughout our sermon series, we have sought to share the stories behind the hymns so that their testimonies and messages could be preserved in our memories and spirits and shared with others. Just as the passion of the work family preserved important stories of faith and hope for us all from a people who were held in hopeless slavery, it is important for all of us to continue to pass down the testimonies and stories of these Christmas hymns so that, so that future generations understand the fullness of the messages that they share. Since we live in a time in which Christmas becomes confused between the secular and the holy, it is vital that we bear witness to the blessing and treasured gift of Christmas. So treasure all the hymns and stories in your heart, just as Mary did on the night of Christ's birth, and go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Jesus Christ, God's gift of salvation for all of us, is born. Amen. <laughs> 